Hello and welcome to the result of the first Acolytes contest. Today, we will be talking about the winners and how they ranked among me and the judges that helped me in the process. We had a good bit of entries, I think about nine in total. But besides that, let's get right in and jump into the results. Alright, so to start things off, we have Lego Swapper's version of Fish. The story for this entry is that the master found the body of an alternate fire arcs and moved the fish's soul into it. Now, first thing to note is that he basically reused his fire arcs build with different things, mostly the head and the additional arms, which I do like, but in terms of creativity, it's a tad luck luster, which leaves this ranking for this one a solid 3 out of 10. So up next, we have one of three entries of Master of Nothing's entered. So sadly, there's no backstories for these folks, and for the lower of the three, we have Koro. In terms of building, there isn't really much going on to make it stand out, as he looks more like a skull villain. But I do like the effort that was made. However, I am sad to say that I cannot rank him any higher on this list. His ranking is a 3.5 out of 10. Speaking of Master of Nothing, we have his next entry for Onyx. So like the last one, same issue. But I do like the additions of the Beast Heads as hands. But one of the reasons it didn't rank higher was because of the same reason as his Koro, as he didn't stand out too much and I would have liked it if he could hold stuff, mainly his sword. In this form, leaving this one at a 3.5 out of 10. So for one of the first entries for Sorbin, we have... Jackson the Thunder Boy's version of him. This one definitely had a strong start, but it feels like he is missing a few things that need to be filled in, mainly the chest region. Now, I will say, the shield looks really nice, and I might be using that for another character, but this does leave this entry at a 4.5 out of 10. Up next is Zeta's Thin Duel. So this is one of the many Thin Duels we received for this contest. For this entry, I really did like the mask that was used, and backstories wise is apparently that this body that this Thindle used once belonged to a bio brawler that died in battle. The master located his body in an arena, which leads me to believe he was a gladiator, but I cannot confirm as that was all that was for there for story wise. Now the pros and cons. Pros was the upper torso looks really nice and the tail looks good. However, the cons are that the posability wise, there doesn't seem to be a lot of room for it. And the mask was made by Red Star Games, and if I wanted to get my hands on one, I would have to wait a good minute. Now don't get me wrong, they make amazing masks, but they do tend to take a while, which is why this one gets left at a five out of 10. So for our next one, we have a Sorbin by Mr. Dr. Dumb. So story-wise, there's none to go off of, and it is a little hard to make out everything in the photos. But from what I can tell, there was a lot of silver being used, which is nice. I do wish there was a little more going on, leaving this one at a 5.5 out of 10. So now we start getting into more higher rankers, and one of the first is Koro, made by Ion Mox, who made a Koro with this one. He used the mask... That was optional, but highly encouraged, which in turn gave it extra brownie points. But he also gave it digigrade legs, which didn't help too much for its rank overall. I love how the build looks and the mystery he wrote for its entry, and it is. Russell Jackson was an explorer. He would travel the world in search of the greatest treasure. He caught a lead of a mask that would, could grant the wearer the strength, speed, and agility that of a gray wolf. Jackson sought the treasure not to use it, but to sell it for a profit. He would eventually find the tomb housing the mask, but Jackson would make a grave error. While inside the tomb, the floor opened beneath him and Russell Jackson fell to his death. The mask would recognize his corpse and attach itself to him. He became a monster. His legs shifted, his nails turned to claws, his bones became exposed. Now with the Absa mended to his corpse, making him unrecognizable, he now prowls in the nights of in search of his next live prey. This lore thing definitely helps with the rank, but I shall say I feel like the con 
the contest requirements were a little misinterpreted as his master are usually the ones to bring back his acolytes. And with that reason, it leaves it at a solid 6.5 out of 10. Sharing this ranking is Electro Tin's Thin Duel. So this Thin Duel's first glance looks cool and I love the shapes he went with. And the weaponry and wings and everything. It looks awesome. But one of the things that hurts this one's ranking is mostly the color scheme. Now don't get me wrong. I really loved the red eyes and the green throughout the entire build, but the main build is mostly black, and I do like seeing at least a little more color for an acolyte, which does kind of hurt most of the others in this video. Now, the lore for this one was nice and simple, and the indications helps with its ranking, as in its entry lore is, the master found this body deceased in a recently abandoned battlefield of a civil war on some distant planets, which leaves a lot of room for interpretations, which I like because of the mystery. And that is why this one gets a solid 6.5 as well. Coming up next is another Sorbin entry that was done by my good friend Obsidian. I really like the aim he took with this one, as he actually included a knight's helmet mold. That being said though, it does not save it from its rank, as it's using my turtleback system. And I like seeing other creativities being taken when it comes to the torso builds, and not just something I already made. The sword could have been more straightened in my opinion, which kind of leaves this one at a 7.5. Sorry, bud. So for number 10 on this list, we have the last one of Master of Nothing's entries. And he was actually the first to submit an entry with this one. This thin duel I had liked because of the head design and the weaponry choices. However, I feel as though there could have been a little more added. Mostly size-wise, as I feel like he is a tad short, but nevertheless, I do really like how this one looks, which is why the ranking this one gets is a 7.5 out of 10. So as we reach the end with these last few entries, the first of which is Swappers. How did you sneak your way here? Oh well. This build that was used for this thin duel is pretty nice and would have been the winner if it wasn't another reused model of one of your dudes. With the same lore. But I shall give credit where it's due, and that's the fact that I like how this one looks because of the extra arms. But I do feel as though more could have been changed in this build, landing this one at an 8 out of 10. For the second to last ones, we have Xenojiva's Fish, who I gotta say, I really like the build choices he made. And the head looks awesome. The head looks as though it has a jaw. And the lure for this body was a nice touch as he uses a blue whale for the body. Fish the whale. <laughs> Not a lot of complaints I can find when looking at it except posability. As he looks as though he could fall over if not careful. But overall, really love how this one came out. Landing this one at a 8.5. Honorable mentions, we have Sir Rex's Koro. As we are about to announce the winner of this contest, let's give an honorable mention to Mr. Sir Rex as he was, by technicality, the second to upload a entry. But because he had submitted it through YouTube, not the way I'd like, I decided to give a honorable mention instead. To show his efforts are seen, but with that out of the way, let's move on to the winner of this contest. And here we are, the winner of the first Acolytes contest. And that title belongs to... The Yeet, who had made this amazing thin duel. The build, the lore, the vibe. It was all amazing and all the judges had agreed this was the best thin duel out of the bunch. As it scratched each of our itches for a thin duel. Its lore is, a, is also amazing and eerily as it says. The clanking of the chains began to stop as the creature's body stopped flailing. It had breathed its last. Suddenly... It moved once more. This time, it was more sure of itself, but something was not right. It moved with the same level of sentience. It moved like it was not just some creature, but an intelligent being. It was not the same being that had died shortly before. And that leaves a lot of room to interpretations and leaves a sense of mystery to it. Build-wise, it looks awesome and gives off an unperceived killer effect. And the way it can just shrink down but then expand to grow taller definitely sells the creepiness for this thin duel. 
The head I absolutely love as it looks like a praying mantis of sorts. And the addition of the rib cage, it looks sweet. There's so much I could go over this build, but I'd rather let you all see what exactly made this thin duel so interesting. One last thing that it helped with its ranking was the color choices. He had chosen, for as for most of the other thin duels, they went with either pure black or green, which is welcomed, but something about the white and red just gives a sense of danger. To say the least, the rank for this amazing build and the winner of the first Acolyte contest is Yeet's Thin Duel, landing at a solid 9.5 out of 10. So the prizes for the winner will be a special role in the Discord server, which y'all should join, called First Acolyte Contest Winner and the Thin Duel's role. And second one is a $25 gift card of your choice. And I shall be getting into contact with you when the time arrives. And with that said, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the first ever Acolytes contest, and there will, should be one rolling around very soon. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and with that, ciao for now.